How's it going everybody? I'm Lox. So you've gone through the trouble to download UPBGE and now you're in Blender. But what do we do? All we have is the starter scene with our beautiful default cube and uh, that's about it. But how do we make a game? I'm going to be walking you through how to set up your scene and get the game logic running. We're going to start by taking our main window here and let's just right click on layout and duplicate. And this will be just to make things a little bit cleaner. Now we're going to double left click this tag right here and rename this to logic. Now we have our logic window. So what we're going to do with this window, what we're going to do is go up to this corner and you'll see this little plus icon go. After you see that, just click and drag down and this will split the screen. With this split screen, what we're going to do is go over to this little icon over here, this editor type, and we're going to select logic node editor. And this is where you'll do uh, a lot of your logic nodes. But there's another way to add logic to a game. So we're going to go back to our layout here and we're going to call this logic bricks. So this is going to be a different style of coding for our game. And we're just going to do the same thing, drag down, split the screen, and then go over to logic brick editor. And this is going to be a different type of uh, logic nodes. And this will kind of be for your more simple things your simple movements and stuff like that. Whereas the logic node system this is going to be for more advanced features uh, for coding. And this is going to be where we do kind of our super basic stuff. So we're going to take our default cube and we're just going to move him up. So we got our nice little cube and it is now moved to kind of this, uh, the top of this grid here. And all I did was press the G key Z and then tap one. And that just moved it up one unit. So now that we have our, default cube, what we're going to do is press shift and A, and this is going to bring up this little add menu here. And we're just going to add in a basic plane. This is going to be our floor. So let's uh, press S and we'll just scale this. Let's scale it 10 times. And this will make a nice little floor for us. Now we can click on our cube and we'll just add a simple cube sensor. And this is going to be the action that tells the cube what to do. So what we're going to do is click on this kind of keyboard here and we can go to where it says key and then press, let's say a, and we'll just go up to the keyboard where it says keyboard and click on it, highlight blue, and then just press a again. That means when we kind of minimize it here, we can know what our thing is doing. Then we'll go over to our actuator. This is the command that will be executed. So what we'll do is we'll add in a motion. And this will be our simple motion for the cube. Then we can just take this little chain icon, click on it and drag it over to the other one. And this will add an and sensor. There are a couple different things in here, but for now, all we're going to worry about is our and. Minimize that and and move over to the motion. And to do this little part here, what I like to do is press seven on the numpad and this will bring us to top view. And for our side to side motion, all I want is this X axis, which you can see is this red line right here. And if you uh, want a little better reference, you can see up here in the top right, there's this little axis here. And you can see the negative axis and the positive axis for the X. And what we want to do for A is when we press A on the keyboard, we want it to go in the negative axis. So go to your X here and just tap this once. And then we'll do uh, negative 0 0.01, which is going to be pretty fast or fast enough for this small scene. If we want to test out the game, all we have to do is press P and this will activate the game in our window. Then after you have that, all you have to do is press A and you can see we have a cube that moves, but it only moves in one direction and doesn't do much. So let's make it a little bit more interesting at another keyboard. Take this keyboard and let's do D. And that way we can go in the opposite direction. Then connect these, oops, that's the wrong actuator. Then connect these two together and we have another motion. Then all we have to do is go on to our positive point one and press P. Then when we press A, we can see that our cube still moves. And when we press D, we move in the other direction. And this is how you do pretty simple movement. And I like to keep it in the logic bricks because movement and stuff is, uh, it's just a little bit easier this way. 
but the only thing is it doesn't have as much control as the Logic Note, and we'll be taking a look at that in the next video, so subscribe if you want to see more of that. But for now, let's just go over these simple Logic Notes. Okay, so now let's add our other two keyboard options. So we're going to go in here, we're going to add our next keyboard, and you kind of got the gist of it, so I'll just uh, speed this up a little bit. And now we have a character that moves in all four directions. Like so. Now that we have that, let's go to the physics tab. And this is going to be where we can add our jump and everything like that. Also just basic world physics, which is very important for a spicy video game. So let's go over to our sidebar here. This is our property tab. And we can just go down to this circle with a uh, line and another circle next to it. And this will bring us to our physics selection. Now the first object we have selected you can see is the cube and this is its properties for physics. If we click on the plane you can see that it has its own set. Now what we're going to do is just click back onto our basic default cube here and you can see that it's currently set to static. And this just means that it is uh, suspended in space, it doesn't really do much, it has collisions but it does not have its own physics. So what we're going to do is click on static. And when we get to our character option, we want to select actor. This will allow things like sensors and uh, other collisions to be able to detect this character. And we have a couple of other settings here. We can adjust the step height, the jump force, amount of jumps. So you could add a double jump here or the max slope. And this max slope basically says uh, the degree that the character can climb uh, over an object. 90 degrees means that you walk up to a wall and you'll probably be able to jump up the wall. So we'll just leave these all default for now and we will move on to the collision bounds. Now the collision bounds are going to be pretty simple. They kind of just do the thing. If we click on collision bounds over here, enable it, we want our box since that's the shape of our cube here. And you can see we have a few options as well for other things. We have convex hole. This will be a generalized kind of mesh shape for your collisions. This is a slightly less advanced version of triangle mesh. And triangle mesh just means that it will basically have all the collisions for every single face and it's very advanced, sometimes can lead to crashes depending on the complexity of your mesh. So just be careful when using it and always save a ton. All right, so now that we have our cube, we have all of our collisions and our physics set up. We can see if we bring this cube up in the air and we press P, it falls to the ground. We finally have physics to our game. So let's add a jump button. Let's go to our keyboard, add the keyboard, and we'll add spacebar. Then we will name this jump, and we will minimize. Then what we can do is add a, another motion. I just press T on the keyboard. It is my shortcut for adding this motion. Then what we can do is click on simple motion and go down to character motion. This will give you a few options, but the thing we want to focus on right now is the jump button. Click on that and enable it. Blue means enabled. So we can minimize that. And if we go into our game here, press P, you can see if when I press the space bar, our character jumps. Now we can take a look at this physics category again, and you can see if we add uh, another jump to the max jumps, if we press P, and I press the space bar twice, we have two jumps, which is pretty snazzy. Let's set that back to one for now, and we can also adjust the jump force. Right now it's set at 10, so let's just set it to about 20 to give us a pretty razzy result. If we press P and then press space bar, you can see we have a much higher jump now. But let's set this back down to 10, and the max slope is just how uh, effective it can climb up objects. So let's grab a cube here and demonstrate this. So if I kind of put this down here and we walk into it, you can see the character kind of goes over top. If I raise this up, let's do a full size cube here and I can walk up and since it's on 90, I can just walk straight up this cube. If I put this cube on collision box, you can see that I can no longer climb it. But without it, it's just a general kind of sphere shape, so the character just climbs right over. If I take our character 
and we say our max slope will be 26 degrees, we can no longer climb over this cube. But if I rotate this cube a little bit, 26 degrees is not much to uh, work with. So even that slight of an angle. For our character, I think we'll set it to 45 degrees. And we will just do that. And now we can climb nice and easy over this little cube here. And that's kind of what we wanted at. Let's delete that separate cube and save our game. So now we have our basic character here. Can't do much, but uh, you know, it works. And with this, you could probably make like a little platformer or something. Uh, and I mean, it's just max creativity. Anyways, that is how you make a basic player with logic bricks. So that being said, I will see you in the next video.